I'm going to teach you how to diagnose the cervical vertebrae uh, from C3 to C7, uh, from C2. Um, so to start, you should um, again do myofascial release just to release some of the tension in the cervical muscles there. Uh, what you're doing now is you're feeling um, for the articular pillars. So the best way to start is to uh, slide your fingers off the opposite foot and feel for the first spinous process that you feel. Um, C1 does not have a spinous process, so you'll be feeling C2, um, and then off. Uh, laterally on both sides, you'll be feeling the articular pillars of C2. Um, you can move down um, further to the next one, CC3. Find one that has rotation. If you find one that, that has rotation, uh, the side that is um, most more posterior is the side of that rotation. So your fingers are on the pillars, and you feel that the right side is more rotated. Um, then you can test. Um, the flexion component. If you were to do that, then you would uh, lift the head, um, closing down the cervical vertebrae below that until you feel movement or gapping at um, the gap between C2 and C3 vertebrae. If I was on C2 testing C2. Um, to test uh, for side bending, you can also translate uh, the um, the articular pillars of the vertebrae. So what you would do is your fingers are on the pillar and you would push sideways on the pillars and see which side translates more easily. Um, the side that translates more easily is uh, opposite to the side that the side bending is. So if the patient is rotated to the right, um, you know that uh, the patient is uh, side bent to the right as well, and you can check that by translating. It should translate to the left more easily than it does to the right.